Today I wanted to show you this engine. I've had it for a couple years now. Really picked it up unexpectedly. There was all of a sudden a Facebook Marketplace ad showing auction today. This was in the in the later COVID summer and uh, most companies had already switched to online auctions. So it was really neat to see an in-person auction. So boogie down there is about two hours away. And uh, there's this engine which I thought was a lot smaller in the pictures, but it's a pretty reasonable size unit. So push comes to shove, ended up with, uh, with it and didn't really have any plans, but I'll tell you its story. So it was salvaged by this fellow who, uh, who had passed away and they were auctioning off his place uh, from the Phillipsville Cheese Crate Factory. So they, this machine termed, uh, it, it ran a huge elm veneer lathe. So what I was told was this veneer lathe started with a log and it would peel off eight inch elm veneer to make cheese crates like this fella here. So you steam it and then you can wrap the elm into a circle like this and then nail it together a whole bunch. And that's what this is. It's a big solid sheet of uh, one layer of veneer. So an eighth of an inch. So that's what this place made. Uh, this place was shut down long ago and when they were cleaning it up, this fella got the engine out of there somehow. I'm told the boiler is still there, but I don't know even exactly where this place is. Um, it's an early engine. You can see on the cover here, it says Leonard and Sons, patented January 9th of 1877. So industrial um, devices of that heritage in this area are extremely uncommon. It says on the bottom as well, well, yeah, London, Ontario. So uh, Leonard was a big maker, Canadian maker of engines and uh, all kinds of industrial purposes. Uh, this is one of the earlier ones that I've been able to find. There's a few uh, catalogs that are still out there, which is which is kind of cool. But a couple of the things I'll point out to you on it being early are the head only has four bolts that hold it in place. And just now I'm looking, I see a serial number on here, Z275, it seems to say. I have to clean that up. But it only has these four bolts holding the head on and the head kind of is inlet a little bit but it's a quite a big uh, cylinder inside there it, it, it's got to be close to eight or ten inches um, the stroke is about the same as that eight or ten inches um, it has a simple crank it's not balanced at all and I believe it's already been turned and reduced in diameter probably stuck up at one point or it jammed at some point in its life when I got it, it was only spinning a little bit. It turns out that's because there was a massive mouse nest inside one of the, inside the, um, this would be the front of the cylinder. The mice were accessing it through the uh, three inch pipe exhaust connection on the far side here. So with a hook and a lot of patience, slowly I pulled it all out. So the whole thing is not seized. I took the eccentric off because this was giving me trouble. The, the, valve was being funky at one point so um just disconnected it's not broken it's just disconnected at the moment so if i give it a spin you can see the whole thing moves quite freely there's a bunch of uh, old scrap on the flywheel from big old that old belt dressing tube stuff they used to use uh, downside is it, it is missing all of its lubricators, but the, it's no terribly big deal. It seems that there was one on either end of the connecting rod and then one on either side of this, uh, the, the crosshead slide. Um, the far side of the bearing has two oil troughs and then a single on that side. You can see the little pulley is just to run the governor. Uh, so I believe to run the veneer lathe, they were running the belt right off this big flywheel. Uh, other interesting things about this engine are is that the front mount is kind of on a ball. This casting, the top of this cast pillar is a ball and the engine just sits with a socket which allows this side, which is very high, the casting is just kind of this tub and then it's flat and there's a bunch of six by six blocks that are holding it up. If that side of the mount is to move a little bit, it doesn't matter because the ball and socket will compensate for that. Which is a very kind of a strange system. Uh, the 
The uh, connecting rod is very early fish bellied style and it's all held together with wedges. You can see there's even some shims kind of in the wedges which are interesting. The packing nut in the back here, packing ring is probably pooched. I can see there's some pitting on the on the piston rod and it looks kind of rough. Um, another kind of funny thing is that there's this little protrusion on the side of the valve chest which is the far support for the valve, uh, the slide valve rod. It's kind of a strange thing. Uh, the governor on this engine's neat. It's a Pickering style, but it's made by Wateris, which was a steam company or a machine company in Brantford, Ontario, Canada. It's marked on this side with uh, Wateris 2, and then on this side, uh, what does it say? Brantford 2, Canada. So it's two inch pipe thread input. Uh, very small pulley on it. Uh, I say Pickering style because it has the three balls with the springs in this orientation. It, um, the balls are kind of funny. They just have these little protrusions that rub on this center rod, whereas the Pickerings have uh, rings that kind of retain them on, from their outermost. But there doesn't seem to be a way of retaining this aside from the limit of this cap traveling down. So, like I said, everything on this engine is not seized. I've kept it oiled and it's been in this shed. The, uh, the spring that you could add tension to the governor to uh, adjust the speed, I've been told it doesn't actually adjust very much, but that was the idea. You can tension this. It's like a bronze or a brass spring and it's broken. And the arm that would normally go out here um, has been cut off, so not sure. There's also a plugged hole in the end of this and then one open kind of pipe bushing in the end and that's how they had this Madison Kip ratchet lubricator set up so it's a uh, it's later and you can just see by the way that this is set up with a bent nail and then whatever this is it was a an after addition it's also been raided its guts are missing the little windows missing so that thing's right off so I'm going to go back to how this engine should be set up with a good old Detroit lubricator uh, displacement oiler. It just adds to the beauty of this. I figured with the curved spokes and everything, might as well keep it as proper as we can. So I'll give you some uh, close-up shots here. Here's the governor. See the broken spring I was talking about here and that this arm has been cut off. Waterous two see the plug and then the bushing in this end where the lubricator was connected i believe that this would have been a quite a low pressure engine at least what we're used to now based on this strange gasket it's a hard red rubber gasket with what looks like a piece of galvanized tin also that this is only set up with four bolts head bolts and this is another one of the gaskets thick red rubber on both sides of the valve chest There's the cross head. Big, huge casting in here. Funny setup. Fish bellied rod. The simple non balanced crank, all held together with wedges. Not sure what the color of this engine would have been. It seems most of the surfaces just kind of have casting scale, unless it was a dark gray, as it looks here. Massive packing nut on this side, the big brass thing that'll have to be tinkered with. This side is kind of cool. This um, insulation chest, I'm not sure what's on the inside yet, but this chest around the cylinder has brass bands. They're quite dirty, but these are strictly ornamental brass bands, or maybe they you could say they hold this on, but that'll look quite beautiful. All shine, shined up. And also look at the socket, I don't know if we can really see from there. Maybe from here you can see just the corner of that ball on the bottom of the casting and then the sockets in the bottom. I guess it's the other way around. An old flat belt used as a gasket on the exhaust side here. Hope you enjoyed that. Stay tuned for more restorations and tinkering from the steam era.